winners in this are the consumers, because we're getting it, if you're a consumer, better than ever before. But the push right now is how do we, everybody talks about this new experiential thing. So how do we provide a better customer experience? And the area that I take a look at isn't on the marketing and the digital side and the seamless, frictionless thing. You know, what I see is that the biggest differentiator now from one retailer to the next is the quality of staff performance in that store. Really what I want you to think about is the potential that exists in your stores that's untapped and how we can actually do a better job of untapping. And see, my starting point with all my clients is that we leave a lot of money on the table every day. And I'm sure you'd agree with that. We don't get all the sales in our stores that we could and or should, yes? So I want you to think about that question for a moment. How much more do you think you actually could sell in your stores? So if I gave you the chance to replay the last three months in business in your store, you get a complete do-over, how much more could you have sold? Now, let's put some parameters on it. Let's assume you can't change the product, you can't change your prices, the level of competition, the marketing, the economy, the weather, Donald Trump, none of that can change, right? All that's the same. If you went back and played it all over again as a percentage, how much more could you sell? And I ask that question an awful lot. And some of you are probably thinking about what this number is. And for some of you, it's a small number. And for some of you, it's a bigger number. But the reality is we begin to see that, yeah, wait a minute, all you have to do is sit on a bench outside any store at any shopping center and you see the lost potential in sales that are happening out there. But I want you to think about it like this. If every salesperson was good as your best salesperson, if every store manager was as good as your best store manager, how much more could you have sold then? And see, what happens then is you all get the Nick Nurse look at that stage of the game because you begin to realize that the potential to grow our business is infinitely higher. So we start to take a look at numbers where we go, well, wait a minute, it's not 5% or 10%. We start to go, well, if everybody in graph, look, that's not realistic. Not everybody could be as good as our best, but we all recognize that everybody could be better. So think about how it is we categorize staff. I typically am pretty fond of saying you categorize your staffs as A's, B's, or C's. A's are your top performers, you'd clone them if you could. B's, your average performers, doing a pretty good job, not stealing too much. Uh, C performers, tricked, in, tricked you in the interview or they're related to the boss. So, what would happen though if all of a sudden there was no such thing as a B rating? And this was introduced to me a long time ago by somebody way smarter than me, and they basically said, Graf, there's no such thing as a B, because the B is status quo, and status quo is just death waiting to happen. They're not moving you forward, they're actually dragging you backwards. So your Bs aren't actually Bs, they're actually Cs. So now you begin to look at this thing, and you go, wait a minute, all that cushy evaluation that we do with our staff saying, yeah, they're in the middle, is actually what's causing you to lose the potential in your business. And that's what we get to, is the fact that these typical retail clerks, and you've heard this from Doug Stevens, you heard it from Steve, you've heard it from everybody on stage that basically says, look, if you're gonna run brick and mortar, typical retail clerks, and we've all dealt with the scarlets of the world, have we not? Right, think about the adjectives that you use to describe a typical retail clerk, and what are they? Disengaged, uninterested, uninformed, would rather be anywhere else than but dealing with you in that very moment. And that's where we run into the problem. Consider the variance in performance that we have. If the blue line down the middle is the average performance for all retailers, there's not much variance in performance on product price, supply chain, marketing, pricing. Look at the variance though in staff performance from retailer to retailer and even within each individual store. I started my company 30 years ago, and I know you're looking at that picture of me and thinking, man, he hasn't changed much at all. <laughs> I don't know why anybody gave that guy any money at all 30 years ago if I showed up on your doorstep, but we did okay from the beginning of this thing. But not much has changed in the world of staff development, and I think it's because we go, human beings are kind of messy, right? Supply chain's pretty good to figure out. It's an A plus B plus C equals D. We look at those things, but man, the staff thing is like kind of messy when we go through it. But what we know is that when we invest in it, when we do it right, things go better. Big, bright, shiny light that we look at all too often revolves around technology, right? Because we get that. That's, that. It's cool, it's sexy, it's expensive as heck. Those same types of investments in staff development, performance, remuneration, recognition, all these things pay off 
like just, just overnight. You know, people start to see increases in sales, in margin, in uh, customer satisfaction indexes. They see staff turnover rates come down. And if we can accomplish all of those things, then that magical thing about experiential retail starts to come to life a lot faster.